How many actual listeners can listen to a control? Well, it may come as a surprise, but it's actually as many as you like. And once you understand this concept, then this is really where the power comes in of this event-driven programming. Um, once you understand this, you have reached a really important milestone in event-driven programming. The idea here is that each listener, as shown here in the middle, each listener can actually listen to several different event sources. So there could be this one central listener and you have 20 buttons and three checkboxes and five text fields and all of the events go to this single event listener which centrally then handles everything that comes in. Of course then you need to, to check this action event from where does the event actually come from. Um, but the idea is that this way now we can, can centralize this event handling and um, treat a very complex user interface in a single place. But actually it also works the other way around. We can actually, also shown in this diagram here, we can also register sev several different event listeners with the same event source. So there could be this one button but um, there could be five different event listeners listening to this button and whenever the button is clicked all of them may receive um, this action event and the callback method action performed in that class, in those classes, in those objects is actually triggered. And again this can be quite useful in uh, separating out different concerns we could have maybe some front-end information happening um, in one event listener and at the same time then the same event triggers some other background processes in another class in a different event listener. Here is the same example shown again in a so-called sequence diagram. Sequence diagram comes from UML, the Universal Modeling Language. You have already seen the class diagrams. Here, this here is the so-called sequence diagram, which basically just describes in which sequence are different methods called. And we saw that initially we have here the J button. Um, once the J button is pressed, it triggers, it calls the action performed method in the my action listener object and um <coughs> in turn then in in this action performed method the j option option pane object is called and in particular its method show message dialog this is the sequence how things happen in this little example so in overview again the idea really is that Java Swing is event-driven programming where user actions trigger certain events. We have seen the action event, but you will quickly also come across different types of events like mouse events, key events. These events are then used to notify listeners uh, for this to happen, the object, those objects, the listeners actually need to register with the control and then they are notified when the event occurs. And to describe what's actually happening when a certain event occurs, we use those callback methods. The most prominent is really the action performed method, which we have to implement when implementing the action listener interface. So it's really like in, in real life as we saw with Bob and Ann, if you don't leave a message, if you don't tell people to call you back, they won't to call you back. So if you want to know the latest news, leave a message, say I want to be called back. <coughs> 